Hello, I'm Atsubo Judge. Now, we've been talking about how to understand the voice of the Holy Spirit, how, how to get to that place where you are being taught of the Lord. Because God said, all Isaiah prophesied this says, all your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. That was a prophecy. And the truth is, today is that day. Hallelujah. All of us, God's children, are being taught of the Lord. Say there, but, but uh, me, my, my, my pastor is my teacher. Well done. Praise God. Now, what's the role of a pastor in your life? I'll tell you. His role is to share his testimony. Now, that's what Jesus sent us to do. Jesus said, we shall be witness. Now, what does it mean to be a witness? A witness must carry a testimony. Now, what's the testimony? See, that's another mistake we make. It's, we think testimony is, you know, sometimes you say, do you have a testimony? You go to church, maybe you go to church and say, do you have a testimony? Um, not really. What do you mean, not really? Now, because you are thinking, that a testimony is, oh, maybe someone say, ah, do you know last week God gave me a new job? Oh, yesterday someone walked up to me and gave me money. Oh, I received a phone call yesterday that something I've been looking for, you know, it has been found. And then you know how we try to control it. You know, pastor said this on Sunday and I took it and then this happened. Ah, that's, not, that's not really testimonies. See, when the sons of God gather, those are not the things they talk about. Oh, sure, those are not the things they talk about. What do they talk about? What is the testimony? You know what the scripture says? The, what a testimony really is, is the spirit of prophecy. Now, let me explain that to you. Because the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Now, how does that work? When I testify, I am saying what the Spirit of God said to me. That is what testimony is. I am saying what the Spirit of God has said to me. Now, when I speak it forth, I am bearing witness that what Jesus said is true. Jesus said when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you. So now I am here sharing with you what the Holy Spirit have taught me. What am I saying? I am confessing. I am testifying that Jesus was right. But you find believers who you're sharing. Do you know what the Spirit of God was teaching me? You know, I, I, I mean, I've never heard anybody say this before. You're sharing this with someone. I've never heard anybody say this before. But the Holy Spirit. And then someone says, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down. See, you need to confirm this thing. You need to run it through 10 10 pastors, 10 real teachers before you confirm whether it's true or not. So, so what the Holy Spirit has taught you, you need men to vet it. You see error? But you see, I understand why they do these things. See, because anybody can just come up and say, oh, this is what the Lord taught me and it's all whatever it is. Now, listen, listen. Don't be too concerned about the false and not accept the truth. Don't get into that trap. You see, don't be too bothered about the wrong people. And then you don't stand up as the right person. You who is true, no, that's what scripture says. He that is righteous, let him remain righteous still. Now, how do you know you're righteous? You see, it's, it's a one personal relationship with the Father himself. And that's what John told us in John chapter 1. He says, these things we write unto you, that you also will have fellowship with us. And then he says, but truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, how, do that, how does that fellowship work? By the Holy Spirit. Now, you see that the Holy Spirit giving to us is everything. So, if you are not conscious, you know what Jesus said in, 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 in John chapter 8? Jesus said, he that is of God, hears God's words. And then he turned to the Jews, Jews says, you don't hear because you are not of God. Now that is big. 
even at this moment when Jesus made that statement, he wasn't talking to born again believers. There was no born again believer at that time. Yet Jesus said, if you have God, you will hear God's words. I tell people this. It's not when you got born again that you began to hear the voice of the Lord. That's another day's talk though. But it's the truth. It is actually the voice you are hearing that led you to salvation. It is that voice that tells you you are now saved. So if you were not hearing that voice at all, there is no way you would have gotten saved. But you know the problem with most people? They hear the voice of God, but they don't understand that this is God speaking to them. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to go into how do you hear God? And, and how do you know that this is God that is speaking? And how do you differentiate the voice of God from your mind? Now, that's what we're going to be dealing with from tomorrow. Praise God, because I've got to stop here today. Listen, I pray that the Spirit of God will open your understanding and bear witness to these things that you're hearing. I pray that He fills you with His Word and His truth. And your understanding becomes opened and that you will begin to understand and hear His voice. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until tomorrow, bye-bye.